Okay, so there's my dot. Trying to give it something to focus on. Anyway, I just turned the dowel rod down to size and used the uh, my usual bit to just uh, cut it off. I should probably paint it before I glue it in. But, uh, huh. Yeah. Cute, huh? Okay. Let's get a nice look at that. Ooh, look how tall those toothpicks are. So I decided to glue in the, uh, the ferrules with, uh, Guess what? And I decided to reinforce the screw holes for the uh, truss rod cover. And I decided to uh, re-glue the nut just a little bit. Let me see, get that big in this direction. It was just slightly off-center to the fretboard. So I moved it over a little bit. I'll let that dry and I'll chisel off the toothpicks and uh, put the truss rod cover back on. The truss rod cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll let it dry for a while. <laughs> Voila! Made in Holland. Now, hmm, I like to put a little uh, soap on the threads before I screw it in. Especially if I filled the holes with glue and a toothpick. That way, in case the glue isn't quite dry yet, it won't stick to the screw so much. Of course, since I'm using you-know-what, <laughs> it's not going to stick to the metal very good anyway. It won't be sticking very well. <laughs> um, anyway, but uh, I'm just saying, they go in easier, they come out easier, and they do less damage to the uh, the uh, threads you're cutting into the wood and glue and toothpick. Ka ching! So, hmm. I painted the uh, fret dot with uh, some of this glossy white paint. It's acrylic, so it's kind of like plastic. Just squirted some in my palette. Use the paintbrush. <laughs> Then I stuck it to some tape. Just kind of roll over the ends. I wonder if that's in focus. Dude, I can't tell. There you go. <laughs> stuck it on my chisel. Then I leveled it by resting the chisel on the scissors. <laughs> yeah, this is something I do all the time, actually. Huh. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I decided... Uh, I decided the one I cut was too thin, so I uh, glued it to the end of <laughs> a piece of my paintbrush that I cut off to make it a little bit taller. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, so there's the, uh, the middle one is the new one. It's a little bit wider than the others, but it came out at a good height. Yeah, I glued it in there, and uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd taken a little bit off the, uh, yeah, a little bit more off of the ferrules. Yeah. As much as I like the bevel. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Can't tell if that's focused. Hmm. Yeah. The ferrules are a little bit tall. Maybe next time I'll uh, take them down a little more. Because there's not a... Well, there's plenty of room to wind a string on there. I mean, I'm not complaining too much. 
I'm just saying. A little bit less bevel and a little bit more room for a string. That might be a good thing. It'll be fine though. Yeah. You know, all the screws are very tight. Now what else did I do? I moved the nut over a little bit towards, yeah, that direction. Hard to see, but the idea was to get the uh, string centered on the fretboard up there. And I just missed a little bit <laughs> first time around. And yeah, on this side, the screws all match now. Um, those screw holes are nice and tight, screws are tight, everything's tight, very nice. Um, and these are stainless steel screws, so you can't hold them up with a magnet, but I think they're tougher, actually less likely to strip out the uh, cross. I could be wrong about that, but I don't know. I could also be right. <laughs> and you can see that, that some of these uh, tuners have slightly bent shafts. I'd say <laughs> it's the ones at the top, which is, yeah, you know, you lean it up against a wall, stand it on the floor and lean it against the wall. That's one of the things can happen. Hmm, there's some kind of a serial number. What's that say? 771200... Well, I don't know. What's that say? Well, whatever it says. It doesn't matter much. Um, I don't think, you know, if this was some other brand, I might say the guitar is made in 77. But, uh, I guess it's possible, but, um, it's the logo. The logo tells me a different story. You know, the Art Deco logo tells me 40s or 50s, but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's 1977. Don't care. Oh, so what else huh. I want to talk about? I did lubricate the tuners. Ever so slightly, I used, uh, <laughs> what do you use when you're constipated, right? You know, I had trouble getting a, a good movement here, so I used mineral oil. Just a tiny bit to just, you know, because really brass on brass is a pretty smooth thing. It's, you know, self-lubricating in a way. You don't really... Unless it's all corroded, you don't need much. <laughs> well, I'll see about getting strings on there. I mean, here's where you learn not to put too many turns on the uh, on the tuning post. And nice thing about steel strings is you don't need very many turns. <laughs> it's kind of grippy, especially if you're up against brass, and that's what these tuning posts are, brass. So it should work out fine. Next stop, strings. Okay, well let's sort of see if we can catch up a little bit where we are. Uh, huh. Let me see, I think I filled the holes and I've got matching, you know, some nicer screws. What kind of screws? Huh. Those, number four by three eighths, because they're about the smallest screw well, I can get at Home Depot. Panhead Phillips. Look like so. And on the back, I think I, uh, I filled all the holes and I used all the same screws and everything matches now. Ah, so. You can see I got strings on it, and uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I don't know. You know, I could have taken a little bit more off of that bevel, so I had more room for string on the uh, tuning post, but I think that's okay. You just learn not to use too many turns. 
<coughs> you see I moved the nut over a little bit to get a better centering on the fingerboard up here and you know I've got pretty good centering down here well not perfect you know I could move the tailpiece even a little bit further but uh, funny thing is um, hmm. yeah I don't know if I should show you this that come to? About five and three quarters. What's it come to on this side? About five and three quarters. About five and three quarters. Huh. You know, it's like when I look at it with my eyeball, it's kind of like off-center, but gee, I guess that's better centered than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Not bad. Well, anyway, it could move just a tad, just a tiny little bit of an amount, but you know, to get it string centered down on this end. But you know, there's enough friction that you can that you can make an adjustment of where you want it to be. And uh, sounds great. Plays great. Neck is great. The only thing that still bothers me is the little gap underneath, you know, which you probably can't see. Here, let's see if we can shed some light on it. I don't know. Can you see the gap? You get a good contact towards the middle of the uh, bridge, but out towards the edge. It's sticking up. So. I don't know. I've been working on. Yeah. Here's the contraption I've been working on. I found a little piece of uh, scrap walnut. I taped it to this thing and huh, wrapped some sandpaper around this. You know, the idea was to. Uh, get this flat but it's not coming out flat and funny thing is I don't really want flat anyway it's a little bit tapered towards the edges because you know when you're sanding you're kind of going like this the idea of the large board was to minimize the back and forth when you're sanding it but yeah I'm getting a little bit of a taper but a little bit of a taper is okay because the crack I want to fill as a taper to it so I haven't a hundred percent decided I'm gonna do it but I'll probably cut that in half and put um, the halves on the bottom of the bridge and then try and sand that to shape we'll see how that goes though I, I still haven't decided yet but you know, meanwhile I'm gonna try and make it as thin as I can because the more you take off now, the less you have to take off when it's on the guitar. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I was wanting to tell you I didn't oil the fretboard. I just like my fretboards dry, but different strokes for different folks, I guess. I think, see, I don't know if the oil makes the wood harder or softer. <laughs> feel free to guess but I think the wood should be as hard as possible you know that's why they make fretboards out of hardwoods <laughs> because it wants to be hard and I don't know maybe if you put oil on there it makes it softer and absorbs the sound but I don't know that just kind of a guess but you know when you don't know you can guess but anyway, you know, folks who like putting oil on there, have fun with your oil. I'm sure it helps you out with your shredding as your fingers slide up and down the thing. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, that's all for now. Hmm. So, <laughs> glued and clamped. 
two little patches on the end, hopefully fat side out. Don't know. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like those clamps, you know? It's like, sometimes I think they're just the right thing. <laughs> sometimes not, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I've probably ruined the threads. <laughs> we'll see. Well, like I said, I had a whole lot of sanding ahead of me. So, uh... Yeah, I sanded down the sides and the ends. Hmm. Now let's try this. No, can't do that. The sides and the ends. Come on, baby. Focus for me. The sides, the ends. And I did those with a little strip of sandpaper. Hmm. Let's pretend we're doing the sides. Let's pretend we're doing the ends. Except the ends, I kind of, well, you know, watch this. Because the ends. Are you getting dizzy? <laughs> I never thought about that. The ends are a little bit rounded, so I kept the ends a little bit rounded. And I don't know if you can see the contrast between the two kinds of wood. But, uh, yeah, whatever the bridge was originally made of makes walnut look light. <laughs> and I'm not quite done on the bottom. The bottom I'm doing up here. I'm holding the sandpaper top with one hand and going back and forth with the other hand. It's just way easier to go this way than the drawing it this way. But that's about all I can do, maybe today or for a while, because this is like <laughs> a whole lot of sanding. Like hours. <laughs> because these are hard woods and I just didn't want to use a fresh piece of sandpaper. It's just the same, the same sandpaper I used the first time I tried to fit the bridge. What's left of it. No, actually, this purple stuff is still working great. There's no substitute. I mean, maybe there is. <laughs> That's a different color that you get at Lowe's instead of Home Depot. But yeah. Cubitron 2. <laughs> yeah, I could have used something coarser, but yeah, it's okay. Accidents happen more slowly <laughs> with a higher grit. But yeah, I still have a ways to go. Yep. But it'll go better if I'm feeling fresh. Fresh like it easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so huh. well, this is done for now. Um, you know, I did a bunch of this kind of sanding and put it in, and it's not quite perfect. I don't know if you can see that. Paper goes underneath it on the ends a little bit, more so on the treble side. I was going to spend a little more time on that, but well, the next project came in, so I'm going to declare this to be done. Huh. Um, hmm, what was I going to say? I don't think it killed the sound. I mean, we're definitely getting more support out on the edges. Whoops, earthquake. Um, interesting thing is, uh, to get the kind of action I want, well, I don't know if you're gonna this. Let's 
on a weird angle. Yeah, how tall is it standing on the screws? It seems like it's come down some, so it's possible that by spreading out the weight, well, there's less of a depression in the top, which is a good thing, I think. Less stress. Um, let's see. The intonation. That's a little flat. Close enough. You know, I could work on the intonation, but I'm probably not going to. <laughs> this thing is done. It's pretty good. Let me see. Flip up the old screen. Let me see. how Jerry Rosa, he sings a little song at the end, <laughs> a little gospel song. Well, that's as good as it gets for now. <laughs> So the action came out 90 thousandths, approximately, on the bass side and 80 thousandths on the treble side. fretboard particularly. That's more what's going on down here. Not, I could, yeah, if I had a better way to measure things, I could probably get a more precise job on the saddle. But, you know, 1980 is not bad. I mean, for me anyway. <laughs> All things, I mean, dude, considering what it was, I didn't measure it, but
think it sounds pretty good. I like this one. <laughs> and it plays great, dude. 90 and 80 is pretty good. Huh. It's about as good as anything else I've got, as far as playing goes and the sound. I'm still surprised at the sound. It's got silken steels on there now, but that'll be changing. To what? I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I've been thinking about putting a pickup on it. Unfortunately, it doesn't really fit. Where'd it go? You know, your standard pickup is too tall. I don't know, can you see that? Probably not. Here, put it on that side. It's just too tall. So, I have to do something custom or figure out something else. Yeah, you can feel free to wonder why there's a Seymour Duncan pickup in uh, <laughs> a DiMarzio box. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, so this is done for now. How weird. I mean, this is like a month and a half of real time. Just crazy. Crazy amount of work. Yeah, here. <laughs> Just crazy. <laughs> well, I guess that's about... Oh, yeah. Hmm, no. I think I've already told you pretty much everything you need to know. One way or another. So... I'm signing off on this one, for now anyway.